Right, welcome back to the channel. Hopefully you're all doing well. We are back on the renovation job and we're going to tackle the boiler today. I'm taking out this old Baxi Solo heat only and I've, well, I've put a whole new heating system in this property, a uh, new hot and cold pipe worth a lot. Uh, and the boiler I've chosen to fit is a Worcester 8000 Combi Life. In my opinion, it's a very good boiler. I know some people hate hate Worcester, some people like Worcester. I'm not really going to get into the reasons in this video. I think, I think they're very good. Uh, they still are one of the better boilers and then you can fit a lot worse than Worcester um, so yeah that's what we're fitting um, I've got the care pack uh, to fit so that comes with the filter I think it comes with a programmer and all the bits and bobs we've got obviously flue kit shock arrest there and that's just a CalMag scale inhibitor so yeah that's what we're doing boilers going on that wall I've already got my gas around hot cold flame returns are all up there if we need to move them spurs and bits and bobs we can do because the place is being rewired and um, so yeah First job is going to be get that old boiler off the wall, uh, get it all disconnected. It is all drained down the system. And yeah, we'll get the frame on the wall for the Worcester and we can start running some pipe work in. So yeah, we'll crack on. I'll be doing better than the weather because it is absolutely pouring it down. I'm pleased I'm inside today. Just before we properly get on, we go on about water quality and stuff like that. This is a job I went to the other day. Um, went round to quote for a new boiler. I think she'd had some online quotes. <laughs> And I asked her what was wrong with the old boiler, why she wanted a new one. And obviously it was, none of the radiators were working. I said, to be honest, it's more of a problem with the system. So anyway, I just, I opened a drain off tap and that is the colour of the water. Um, to me, obviously, if you see it like that, like cherry aid tomato soup, that's drawing in air. Uh, it was an open vented system. It wasn't, it was all, it was copper microbore. I don't think any of the radiators were working properly. I said to her, well, basically, even if you put a brand new boiler in there, it's not going to fix your system. So what I've quoted to do is, I've quoted to seal the system, to obviously do away with the little header tank in the roof, fully flush it and see if we can rescue the system, um, see if we can get it all sorted, but yeah. As I said, there's no point putting a new boiler, whatever boiler you fit, whether it be a good boiler or a bad boiler, on a mucky system. You need to get that system cleaned before you put the boiler on. Obviously this one we're okay because we're on a brand new system, but yeah, it's just something to watch out for. You don't, customers don't always understand that putting a new boiler in isn't gonna fix all the radiators. I think there is a, there is a drain off tap on these. Can you see? You probably can't on that right hand side, but what I'm gonna do is just lift this one off hole but if you ever did want to drain one down you can get a hose, hose on there just get all the old pipe work cut off and then we can get the boiler lifted off i've disconnected the flue disconnected the flue out of it um just got the condents and the electrics and we should be good i'll just cut that oh, wire off. it's on the return that's free now on the pipe work. Flues flee, just the electrics and the gas. Wheel, she's on the room. There we go. Right, I've just hung my template on, lined it up with the flue hole. Um, so that's where the boiler will sit. Obviously you always want to try and line up with your flue because you don't really want to be drilling it out if you can help it. Um, just pop the laser level on because I'm feeling really posh on this job. Um, and it looks really professional, doesn't it? <laughs> so yeah, just mark out where the um, the brackets go inside. I generally mark these two. Uh, on these, obviously you need to keep your pipe work within this zone here to go up the back. But what I'll probably do with the return, I'll probably put the filter underneath the boiler somewhere and then take the return up that side just to give myself a little bit more space. Um, I've also got pick flare return up um, then flow returns down there and I've got one off the dining room to pick up as well uh, and they also want an outside tap underneath the boiler so we'll have to pop, pop a double check valve and bits like that on there probably might even put the outside tap over there somewhere um, so yeah I'll get the bracket on the wall uh, and then we can start putting some pipes in this is like your jig for your pipe work connections that hooks over there and that tightens up. That's got the boiler jig on the wall. The good thing about these is you can pipe everything up and then hang your boiler last. What I need is a flow, a a gas will go along the side, a cold for the outside tap, and a return dropping down. 
and then the rest of them need to swing up as i say i might put the filter below and then swing the return up that side it won't matter obviously we've got to lag all that so i like to get all my clips on the wall first nice and straight nice and level um and then we can just literally put the pipe work in I find a lot of that plumbing is just preparation work. It's all about setting your setting your stall out right, so to speak. Um, years ago, well, it, it comes with experience, but obviously, I I did used to rush jobs, and then you look back and think, oh, that could have been so much better if I just if I just taken an extra couple of minutes just to think about what I was doing, getting my clips on, and getting things sorted. never seen inhibitor that small that's supposed to do 10 radiators or 100 lit 100 liters look look how tiny that is it must be the super concentrate stuff it used to come in the obviously this comes in the care pack obviously I, I guess that's designed to fit in the little in the smaller filters but if they can make it that concentrate i would buy that all the time because obviously it is easier to get into the, even the bigger filters sometimes they overflow yeah look at that my hands are massive <laughs> With the care pack, you get a spare fill loop as well. I know the 8000s come with them built on, but it still works out cheaper to buy it this way because you get your programmer, you get your filter, and you get your chemicals. It works out cheaper than buying them individually. My mate, the spider, he does all my video editing now. He's really good on the web. Terrible jokes as well on this channel. When I work, I tend to flux everything up as I go along. Um, it's just experience, it just makes you faster. I say, when I was working with Jacob, it's no criticism. He was just putting stuff together and then fluxing it up after, so you like, you got, you like doing it twice. So, as I say, it doesn't always fit, but if, I, if you get your measurements right, it should be about bang on. I'd have laughed there if that didn't fit. <laughs> We're good. Most important bit is get all your flux off. I'm hoping to slide that down a little bit, closer to my clip, but I just didn't want to melt it. This will be a bit wham, but we're all right. Now, I do like the Worcesters, the fact that you can pipe everything up before you hang the boiler. It just makes life easy. That wants to be an elbow. Do not want to be a T? And just get some holes pushed through the ceiling. Um, this is for the... Obviously, being in the garage, we'll have to fireproof these holes. Um, it is a building rag. But yeah, that'd be fine. We just get these pipes all, all behind the boiler. Just got all them soldered up. I can solder neatly, but I don't always. Uh, yeah, we'll get them took up behind. I'll put my cow mag on there, put the shock arrester below the boiler on the outside, tap feed. Um, hot will just shoot up the side, flow will just shoot up the side with the T on the bottom, and then we can get the boiler on there. Obviously, I've got the return in. You can get the lid off that filter before anybody says it. This thing here is a scale inhibitor. These work, I believe they work. They're like magnetic inside. You see that screws fit it, stick into it. Um, they're supposed to realign the particles of the water. If you imagine they come through wavy, all the particles, and that straightens it up and it stops 
the scales sticking to the inside of the plate heat exchanger. How well they actually work, I don't know. Um, but yeah, we'll put one on, obviously manufacturer's instructions and all that. And yeah, we'll, we'll go with it. Will the bend fit? Probably not, because I did it. Let's get that up there. Yeah, that'd be alright. It's actually not bad. Not a bad guess, that one. Guess works alright as long as it's right. That's what my mate always used to say. <laughs> You've got to keep them quite tight behind the board so you can't really clip them. But we'll do something with it. Let's bring you in there, like Just dropping the gas, it'll have to go below, and then we'll kick it back in front and go something like that. Anyway, make it up as you go along, and I'm sure it'll be fine. So, there's no set rule really, it's just trying to keep everything as neat and tidy as you can and just do your best because that's all you can ever do. Obviously, when you stand back and look at the end, there's always be bits you think, Oh, I wish I'd done it like that, I wish I'd done it like this, but. It's only because you fitted it that you notice it. Put it on TikTok though and everybody will notice. <laughs> I can't say that word. I'll get banned off, banned off YouTube. Just a little progress update. Uh, gas is going to drop down below, along that side and pick that up. I, in one of my previous videos, you showed me putting all that in, but I've bent everything around to the no, little resistance as possible with gas pipes. Obviously that 15mm one's dead, it's the 22mm one above. I've got the pipes all going through, so yeah, just this last little bit at the bottom and we should be good. Yeah, I've got one of these compression spanners, I highly recommend them. I use mine all the time. I've had that one for oh, donkey's years, it's the, that's the monument one. I think they do the silver line one, which is the same. It's obviously 15mm one and 22 the other, and it is good. It fits 90% of the nuts. Make sure they're all tightened up. I can't even tighten that one. So this is my gas pipe dropping down. So you pull the bend on the bottom. So I want to be about there. So it's back on the manual pipe twice because my other one's gone flat. It lasts ages actually that Milwaukee. I can't rave about how good it is. But it does. Right, all that's piped up onto the boiler. I did consider taking that gas pipe below and then underneath, but I think this benching's going. That's why I've notched the uh, notched the pipes through. So if, if they do take the benching out, obviously you haven't got to cut anything. So yeah, as neat as I can get that, I might actually fit the shock rest there because I think it'll look, I think it'll look quite neat. But yeah, we'll have a look at that bit. I'm going to get the boiler on the wall next. I don't know if this boiler's been out of the box before. I mean, all, all, it was all sealed up. The only thing that makes me say that. I fitted one about four or five weeks ago, went to register it and it had already been registered. So I know boilers were hard to get hold of a while ago and uh, these big companies were buying all the boilers, registering them, getting the guarantees and then just sitting on them and then sending them back. So I tried to register the boiler, obviously obviously I couldn't register it because it had already been registered. 
So I had a right, I had a right palaver. Um, I was absolutely, well, I wasn't very happy because he said, obviously, we can only offer you like a one year warranty on it. And I says, well, I've, I've bought this boiler brand new from, from the supplier. It's not like I bought it online. I bought it from the merchants. And obviously now you're only offering a one year warranty. Anyway, they sorted it in the end, but I wasn't, I wasn't a happy boy, as you can imagine. But I say, what, what do you do as an installer in that situation? Obviously you, you promise your customer an eight or a 10 year warranty. And then the manufacturer says, because it's already been man registered, not my, I haven't registered it. You know, they've obviously sold the boiler to somebody and then they've took it back. They've got to put the Worcester points. So yeah, I don't know. And apparently it wasn't the first time that my supplier had had that. And I'm not obviously named the company that was doing it, but obviously it was one of the big, big national companies buying all the boilers, registering them and then sending them back. So yeah, just watch out if your boiler, if it looks like your boiler's been out of the box. The only reason I say that, it's got, um, it's got a dust line across there. So it looks like it's potentially, this polystyrene has been sat, you know, on, a, on the floor, not in its box. So yeah, we'll have to wait and see when we go and register it. <laughs> has it been registered? Anything on these, before you lift them on the wall, take that off. These boilers are full of water, so if you're on carpets or anything like that, just be careful. These panels pop off to make it, well, I don't know if it makes it easier. It certainly doesn't make it much like They are heavy, they are heavy, they are a heavy boiler these. I think they weigh 57 kilos. I'm not the strongest, but I have fitted probably, well, since like the, the, the classics, the CDI classics, I've fitted hundreds of these. So yeah, I can lift them quite well. One bit of advice, take your phones out of your pockets. Otherwise you'll get them wet when you lift the boilers on. The boiler's wet itself. Might have been me actually. No, that's that's all on the wall anyway. As you say, all piped up, pre-piped, piped straight through the top. So yeah, just we've got the PRV. I've got to connect connect them unions on, they're not too bad, just take the condense trap out. PRV, uh, condense, and then just connect the pipes up in the roof and across the bottom. And that's that all done. If you are watching Worcester, I doubt you are. Put some grease on your condense over it, it makes them easier to get out. Now for our control, on a slightly different note, I would posted a video, oh, how long ago was it? At the start of the year, I think. It was about, it was a Worcester boiler. I never actually named him in the video, but obviously it was probably quite clear it was their boiler, but the baffles, you couldn't get the baffles out. The boiler was less than a year old. And obviously I tried to go through the correct uh, procedure of um, going back to the manufacturer, giving an opportunity to fix it. Anyway, I was just going round and round in circles. They said they weren't going to sort it. I posted that video, and within 20 minutes they were on the phone. So it just proves, it just goes to show. And I never tagged them in it. I never did any any of that. I never even put Worcester in the thumbnail. But it just goes to show they do watch the videos, <laughs> or somebody does. Somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody. Apparently, it went right to the top. That did. So yeah, in the end, they did actually sort that boiler. But you shouldn't, you shouldn't have to do that. You shouldn't have to go through social media and stuff like that. If they've got a problem with their boiler, they should be out fixing it. You know what I mean? Just because just cause that's a hard fix, because obviously the baffle plates needed welding back up, it's not my problem. It's not my customer's problem. It's their problem. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, Worcester, they're not... I do like Worcester boilers, but yeah, when you get a problem with Worcester, you need, to, you need to be owning up. You need to be fixing it. I forgot to put that little plastic bit on, that's for the PRV to see. You can put them on after the fair. And then this just sort of hooks around. Probably doing that completely wrong. And it clips in and across. Like that. And you want your nut. Which I ain't got. 
Right, I'm going to put my shock rest under here. It shouldn't matter where it goes on the cold pipe work as long as it's on there. What I'm also going to do is put a lever valve, double check, and then go out for an outside tap. Uh, what this does is protect Worcester's plastic parts inside the boiler. Yeah, I know they should use brass for the cost of them. Um, this takes up the shock when your taps and stuff are shut. Um, I, I don't know what pressure they come pre-charged at, but generally, well, this one, it does actually sound at three and a half bar. Worcester say, I think it should be... 0.25 of a bar lower than your incoming water pressure. So if it's at three bar, it should be set 2.7 bar. We're getting really technical there because obviously my, my gauge, the one I carry on the van is about broken. Um, but yeah, uh, that's what that's what it should be. Um, whether people do that and whether it makes any difference. I know, say that, but the one I fitted on my dad's house, it's got a water meter. It's never had a right hand side in all those years. And I never bothered setting the preset up. It's probably flat. It probably went flat about 10 years ago. So, yeah, take a bit what you like um, and how good what they, how good they actually do. Obviously, when you see Worcester's little video on YouTube or whatever, they've got it set up in a thing. And their, their water pressure is crazy, like 15 bars, and it's ridiculous. And then they shut it straight on a lever valve and obviously it's sending a shock. Well, you are always, always going to get that. But on, a, on an actual installation, you've got loads of pipe work for, for that shock wave to go back down. Um, especially if you're using plastic. I'm not using plastic. Um, so, yeah, we fit it because we're told to. But, that's, yeah. Obviously, the other thing we're saying, it's at it 0.25 below your water pressure. Obviously, your water pressure changes in the day. So, if I was to come to this job in the morning, when everybody down the street is running taps, it's obviously going to be a lot lower than it is at the middle of the night. So, take it with a pinch of salt. Obviously, always follow manufacturer's instructions. But, ultimately, do what you think is best for your customer. Because, yeah, that's all you can ever do. And as I say, it's okay that these things in a these things in a workshop where it's controlled and measured, but it ain't real life, is it? With the care pack, you get the plug and play Worcester programmable room thermostat. So all you do with these, they're actually really good. Do you remember the old ones where you used to faff around? All you do is plug them straight in, one way around, and then there's a little button that locks. Like that, and that's it. That's all. That's all paired up with the uh, thermostat. So dead easy from an installer point of view. And they say that locks in. And if you ever want to get that out for whatever reason, you can just unlock it and pull it out. We're up in the roof now. These are our pipes coming from the combi. So we had flow, hot, cold, return, and then on here we've got that one's the. Hot flow and return, it doesn't matter too much because they're all bi-directional radiator valves. I'm not going to film any of this, I'm just going to get these connected up, all lagged up, and then we're done up here then. Right, that's got them all connected up. I took my heating underneath so I didn't make an airlock, hot and cold over the top, that won't matter. My high point on my heating system is just behind us over there. Um, so that's the high point in the whole roof. So yeah, apart from, well I'm done up here now actually, everything's lagged, everything's done. I know I've got a little bit of lagging to finish in the garage at the boiler. Apart from that, we're getting there on this job. Just a quick one with outside taps. You are required to have a double check valve within the thermal envelope of the building. These ones you can use as direct replacements for like for like, but on a new installation, the double check valve has to be inside. It is a water reg. The amount of times you see them, people say, oh, they're okay just because you've got a double check valve within the tap is wrong. Because the first frost, that just blows your double check valve and you've lost your protection. So yeah, I'm just going to sleeve that. I've got a... Where have I put it? They only add They only add 600 mil wall plates in uh, So these are actually handy if you've got yeah, 6 inch cavities Because you save you putting a socket on But on this job I didn't really need it So yeah, we'll just pop that through the wall Get the outside tap done we put the double we put the shock arrestor on there and yeah, pretty much all done apart from the lagging and just pick this up around here. Just put a flow and turn into the dining room. I've sleeved the pipes. I've come off the boiler pipe and this also picks them up in the lounge. But I'm gonna end the video there. Um, I have actually sized them radiators to run on 55 degree flow temperatures. They are slightly larger than what you'd, well, not what you normally expect now, but it should be pretty much standard when you're doing your installations. Um, so yeah, the boiler will be condensing a lot more. I, probably, I might do another video on the radiators. I'm not sure, it just depends how much time I've got to film stuff because uh, I'm under a little bit of pressure and I'm quite busy at the minute. 
Um, so yeah, as always, if you did enjoy this video, make sure you like button. If you didn't, I hit the like, not the like button, I just <laughs> hit the like, uh, hit the like button. If you don't, hit the dislike. And um, yeah, we'll catch you all in the next one. Thank you for watching.